the slogan that sex is liberatory has really just been sold to you by Durex, let's be honest. Should commitment and monogamy hold the moral high ground? Now, Stephen, I'm going to come to you first. Yeah, so I've done a political commentary for quite a while online, and I'm currently in a marriage with my wife, and we have an open marriage. So in basically every single conversation I have, I get a lot of questions related to the structure of our relationship, and the questions are generally paired with a lot of judgment as well. I would say that if we look at the way that society is shaped today, we look at the successes or failures of monogamous relationships, at least in the United States, it feels like there's a lot of pressure on monogamous relationships that people haven't been able to adapt to. So for instance, um, I think in the United States, almost half of our marriages end a divorce. I think if you do polling, anywhere from 10 to 25% of people report on cheating on a spouse. So it seems like there is a lot of pressure to be monogamous, but not everybody seems to work well within these types of relationships. I think that when you look for alternative ways to live a lifestyle, I think it's important to understand why you want to live in a different way. I know there's a, uh, sometimes uh, it can be tempting to change things just for the sake of changing things or changing things to rebel, but I wish that in society we could have more open and frank conversations about the types of relationships we have rather than just assuming that there is one style of relationship that has to be the default good style and everything that doesn't fall within that window is you know, receiving the ire and harsh judgment of everybody around you. So I would say no, I don't believe that monogamous relationships ought to have the moral and high ground as long as people are open and honest and they're communicating well within their relationships and everybody's a consenting member. I think that those types of relationships should be able to be explored by people as well. You know, I know this discussion is geared around the idea that something self sort of emancipatory about sex with multiple people is somehow going to create the basis for personal liberation. But I'm sorry to tell you that personal liberation is a lot more complex than that. And coming from a tradition where I think liberation is much more tied to the idea that actually you can find freedom from choosing your constraints rather than the idea that freedom is the complete absence of constraints. Um, so as such, I don't see sex or any act uh, outside of the meaning that it has within the collective or within the power relations which come to define it. And I always look at who benefits the most from any situation in which we change the standards that's existed in society. Marriage has certainly not served women in many ways historically, but the absence of marriage? Hmm. Let's talk. There's this really weird world we live in where I have a feeling that it feels like when we talk about sex especially, we talk about literally everything besides sex. Um, I'll hear like socio-political analyses, I'll hear feminist analyses, um, I hear a lot of talk about not raping people, uh, but we never actually talk about like what healthy relationships or healthy sexual relationships look like. And I guess I wish sometimes the conversation, I understand that there's a need sometimes to look at, thing through the, uh, look at things through the lens of kind of like social analyses or class structure or whatever, but I wish sometimes we would just focus more on like the actual nitty gritty of like what is a positive sexual encounter or what does a positive relationship look like or what does sex look like in a relationship so that people would kind of have more tools to build on to work on relationships. Uh, like for instance, I feel like sometimes you come out of certain talks where people talk about the relationships between men and women and you feel horrible and then you have like nothing you can do about it. Like you go home and it's basically, I guess like, well, the world is basically fucked. Uh, I'm part of an oppressive structure and there's literally nothing I can do besides continuing to traumatize myself with the sexual interactions I have with people around me. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess sometimes it'd be like, you know, like here's how to make sure your partner is having a good time or here's something to keep in mind to make sure that you're having a fulfilling experience for both of you. And I feel like that's like relegated to just sex blogs or Playboy and we never have like real mature adult conversations about it in a wider society. One of the questions that we talked about was this idea that um, the decline in marriage and the increase in open relationships is somehow a sign of a deteriorating culture or of a liberated one and I just wanted to point out that you know you, your question around like do we look at sex in long-term relationships and there are studies on this you know actually people in longer term relationships do report being more sexually satisfied than people who are single you know single hookups on you know social apps are rarely what they're built up to be I mean the uh, you know, the slogan that sex is liberatory has really just been sold to you by Durex, let's be honest. Long-term relationships are also a really um, important way of getting to know yourself. It's one of the only arenas where somebody holds a mirror up to you long-term about what kind of a douche you actually are. And if you don't have that, because every time somebody lifts the mirror up to you, you cut the cord and you dip, 
then we have a problem. You will just remain the asshole that you were when you entered the relationship. I feel like I know a lot of people in long monogamous relationships that are still douchebags. So yeah. <laughs> I feel like the idea that marriage True. works is like the ultimate therapy to fix a person's problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it doesn't necessarily hold true. It could for some people, but the caricature of polyamory will always suffer to the ideal that is monogamy. But I mean, the ideal of monogamy doesn't exist anywhere. You know, it's funny. I'll have people tell me like, how can you handle you or your partner being another person? And it's like, there are monogamous people that can't handle, the, handle their partner having a female coworker, right? Or there are people that can't handle their partner uh, talking to people that they used to date or having friends of the opposite sex. Um, I feel like things like jealousy or irritation with our partners or reflection with our partners, these things can manifest in so many different ways in so many different relationships. There are things that I've learned from my wife that I could have probably never learned from any other person. There are things that I've learned being a father to my son. There are things that I've learned from friends, from coworkers, from peers in my industry. Um, I, I think that life and relationships are oftentimes what you make it. I think that you can find value in monogamous relationships, arguably even special value that maybe you wouldn't have gotten otherwise if you're the type of person that's built for it. But I think there is a special type of harm caused to continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.